John chapter 3, well-known verse, uh, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray you to you touch the message tonight, Lord, that it, that it would help people, that, that it would help somebody out there, Father, Lord, uh, that it would reach, uh, reach ears that need this message, Father, Lord. We thank you uh, for your son. We thank you for the love that, uh, that, 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 that caused you to send him to us, Father. Lord, we thank you that that love ever reigneth in heaven and uh, washes over us. Father, we thank you, Lord. Uh, we thank and, and pray for our, our pastor. Father, Lord, that you lift him up, take care of him, uh, give him uh, grace and mercy and, and rest and uh, peace. Father, Lord, help him. Father, Lord, uh, that he might uh, get a blessing and come back uh, renewed, refreshed, and uh, ready to, uh, to uh, get back to work. Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for uh, everything. We thank you for Bible Baptist Church. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this desk, Father. Pray you'd use me, hide behind, hide me behind the cross, Lord. I pray it in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you tonight. Uh, uh, preacher always says, uh, if you don't know what to preach on, uh, um, a good thing, to, a good place to start is is grace. I've got a, a message on here that I think is just as good, uh, and it's on love. And I pray that uh, it, it'd be a blessing to you tonight. Uh, love is what the verse says. For God so loved the world that he gave. Love will cause you to do things. If, you, if love doesn't cause you to do, do something, uh, it, it isn't love. Love will make you change um, your plans. Love will make you do things you can't explain. Um, this, this is actually a Valentine's Day message right on time. Uh, Easter's next, no, uh, it's a week and a half away. Yeah, yeah, a week and a half away, and so... Uh, this is right on time with the uh, the Valentine's um, message. Um, Easter's not coming up, but uh, but I mean uh, Easter is coming up, but uh, Valentine's is not. But but at Valentine's people are, are always throwing around the hearts, and and you got the little naked baby with the wings and the, and the bow and the arrow, and it seems like there's a lot of bow and arrows these days. People uh, um, using them, and but. Uh, uh, all throughout the Bible, we see terms like wife, bride, husband, family, marriage. And uh, these are, are, are words that, that help us to understand, the love, understand love. 1 John 4, 8 tells us that God is, loveth, is love and that uh, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Uh, anybody who tells you they're an atheist, well, they just don't know love. There's no mercy. There's no love. There's no peace in their heart. They, they think God is dead. And I haven't met a happy atheist yet. I thank God that, uh, that he loved me. He showed his love to me. And his love changed me. Say, what is love? Love is a commitment. Uh, when people get married, that's a commitment. I'll tell you what, let's... They asked children, let me, they asked a bunch of, um, a bunch of children, what does love? And, uh, and then one of the, one of the children says, love is when somebody, uh, when somebody loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know that your name is safe in their mouth. Another one says, love is what makes you smile when you're tired, love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving cologne and they go out and they smell each other. <laughs> love is when mommy gives daddy the best piece of chicken. <laughs> when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore, so my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love. 
Love is when you go out to eat and, and give somebody most of your french fries without making them give you any of theirs. That is love, especially if it's McDonald's fries. Or, or Whataburger fries. Whataburger fries are good. Or, or onion rings. Good onion rings are better than anything. Except, yeah, anyway. Love is when somebody hurts you and you get so mad, but you don't yell at them because you know it would hurt their feelings. Love is when my mommy makes coffee for my daddy and she takes a sip before giving it to him just to make sure it tastes okay. Love is when you kiss all the time. And then when you get tired of kissing, you still want to be together and talk more. My mommy and daddy are like that. They're, they look gross when they kiss. Another, little, uh, another child says, love is what's in the room with you at Christmas if you stop opening presents and listen. If you want to learn what love is, you should start with a... Start with a friend who you hate. <laughs> when you tell somebody something bad about yourself, and you're scared you won't love, and they, you're scared they won't love you anymore, but then you get surprised because not only do they still love you, they love you even more. When you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down, and little stars come out of you. That's love. Love is when mommy sees daddy on the toilet and she doesn't think it's gross. Love is when a, love is when a little old woman and a, and a little old man who are still friends even after they know each other so well. Uh, one child said there are two kinds of love. Our love and God's love, but God makes both kinds of them. Love is when you tell a guy you like his shirt and then he wears it every day. <laughs> the child goes, uh, during my piano recital, I was on stage and I was scared. And I looked at all the people watching me and I saw my daddy wa waving and smiling. And he was the only one doing that. And I wasn't scared anymore. My mommy loves me more than anybody. You don't see anybody else kissing me to sleep at night. So what is love? Love is a commitment. Love, there's the, there's the love that, that, that two people have for each other uh, that will cause them to, uh, to, have a, uh, to come together and unite for the rest of their lives. At least that's what they say before God. We're going to be together for the rest of our lives. Love, love can be that kind of love. It's a commitment. You stand before God. You stand before your people. Uh, we're in Sunday school, we're learning about uh, when people want to do business, they come to the gate. They come to the town gate. That's where all the business is done. Show's over here. Show's over here. Yeah, right. Right here. Commitment's the thing to be respected. Uh, nobody respects commitment much anymore. Uh, there's there are uh, all kinds of uh, things that you can distract yourself with. If you're not committed to uh, another person, uh, it's real easy to uh, split ways. But when you make that commitment, uh, uh, love constrains you. It, it, it'll restrain you. If you really love somebody, if you know what to do, and, and maybe I'm not the best person to preach this, uh, depending on how you think about it. But, but let me tell you, I, I know what doesn't work. And love has some control. Love takes work. Amen. The Bible commands men to love. Amen. It tells us we're supposed to love like Jesus loves. That's a lot of love. Amen. That's a lot of grace. If we actually love the way Jesus tells us to, and that's uh, not just men are supposed to love, but men are supposed to love like that, their wives. Everybody's supposed to love. Everybody's supposed to love their enemy. When you get good at loving an enemy, you don't have to like them. But, 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 but if you get good at loving an enemy, uh, maybe you get a little better at, at loving the people you're, that you want to love. Amen? 
Uh, pray for them. You pray for the people you love. Amen. When you love somebody, it'll keep you doing things you should do, and it'll keep you from doing things you should not do. Amen. When I say it constrain you, uh, when you're married, when, you've, when you're committed to somebody, um, you, you tend to be around them more. And that's not just around, that's not just a couple. Um, parents love their children. And a parent who loves their child will do things that will keep them nearer their children rather than away from them. Now maybe you don't have a parent like that. Well then be one when you are put in that situation. Love continues. Uh, when both uh, spouses are giving in a relationship or, or, or any other kind of relationship, well, it, when you give and, and you give of yourself more than you expect back, love will continue. It, it's when, when love becomes, love disappears when people become selfish. When they care for more for themselves than they do the other person. Love is putting somebody else's needs before your wants you should go ahead and eat and you should i mean if there's somebody who who you love who it's your responsibility to help take care of it's my job to make sure mitchell eats i go to work to make sure him and i can eat um found out i, I may be taking a business trip next week my first thought was how am I going to make sure Mitch is taken care of? He's got to get to and from school. If he doesn't get to school in the morning and get a ride from school back home in the afternoon, that's going to be one unhappy kid. He'll be stuck at home all day with the Internet, the PlayStation, the computer, and whatever he can get to from those things. So I've got to make sure he gets to school. Torture. I've got to make sure he can get to school. I've got to make sure he's taken care of. Why? Because I love him. Love will continue, and I'm going to continue to love him. When he gets old enough, he thinks he can move out on his own and, and take care of himself. Um, I'm still going to love him. Amen. Amen. When I, I mean, Ashley doesn't live with me anymore, but I still love her. Amen. Amen. Take care of my baby girl. Hey, listen, if you don't know... Uh, I learned a lot by watching Miss Connie's dad. And there's some things in the Mexican culture that as, as a white boy growing up, um, I, I wasn't trailer park, but I was definitely white trash. Growing up, we weren't taken care of. We didn't take care of one another the same way I saw Mr. Reuben, Brother Reuben, take care of Miss Connie. Even after she was married, she got a, he got her a truck. I heard he'd give her money every now and then, whether she needed it or not. When you love somebody, you take care of them, whether they need it or not. Amen. You say, you give Ashley money? Well, that's none of your business. Amen. But love continues. It doesn't end. Jesus' love for us is never going to end. If it did, if you could, you know, and that's what is just disturbing about people who think you can lose your salvation. I don't understand those people. Uh, it's got to be the same people who think you can fall out of love with somebody. It, it is something you have to work at. And unlike salvation, uh, uh, you, you, you can get away from it. But if you get away from it, if you, if you cause enough hurt, if you pile up enough arguments you will draw that barrier between you love should continue there's a, a an affection there's a, a that continues through heartaches through financial pressures love just isn't selfish Amen. it gives Love doesn't worry about self or personal desires. I have priorities. You should have priorities too. You should, you should take care of the ones you love. 
And you should be careful who you tell you love. There should be this little circle of people. These are the people I love. Brother Lupe loves all of y'all. I don't know why he loves some of y'all, but he loves all of y'all. And you're in his circle. He loves you. And many of you are in my circle too. Some of you are still trying to get in. Some of you, I've got to know your names before you can get in the circle. But, you know, every now and then you, 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 you might see me hug uh, somebody like little Emily. And little Emily's not here, but I always give her a hug. Why? She doesn't have a daddy anymore. Amen. There's nothing ugly or dirty about that. Right. Something about that little girl touches me. That and she was such a hard worker in Sunday school. I tell you what, man. Uh, they say the happy, the, the obedient child is the happy child. Man, the obedient child and the happy child are also the easiest child to love. You want to be lovable, obey. Trust and obey. Make a vow to God tonight. I'm going to outgive the people that I love. Can I tell the Christmas story, Ash? Can I tell this Christmas story? I'm always going to do it anyway. We had Christmas. Uh, one Christmas, and Miss Connie's probably heard this about a dozen times. We had a Christmas, um, I don't know, back in the 90s. But we, had a, uh, we were living in this house, and uh, we were all uh, excited. The way Christmas works at our house usually is one person is the distributor the, uh, that distributes the gift, and, and, one pers- and another person is, gets to open all of their presents at once. And... Uh, between um, me and Miss Tanya, Ashley got up. At, oh, it was a, after she got all her presents. She she got up and she went around and hugged everybody and told her told them that she loved them. And then um, we moved on to the next person and uh, and uh, and everybody opened the presents. And and I, as we were sitting there in the afterglow, saw all the presents. And everybody's sitting around. Nobody's missing anything. And all of a sudden, uh, her mama goes, Ash. What what'd you give me? She, I, I already, where, where's my present from you, I think is what she said. I already gave it to you. Well, what'd you give me? Love. She went around and she hugged everybody, told them they loved you. Everybody says, you know, the best thing you can get at Christmas is love. But then when you don't get a present, people get upset. Yeah, you, you should be honest with yourself. If you want a present, tell people you want a present. Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell that story for the rest of my life. My great-grandchildren are going to hear that story. Anyway, love's not selfish. Amen. Love is compassionate. Compassion will help a, a, a marriage strong, be stronger. It'll be more stable. It goes beyond selfishness. If you put your, your wants and what you want, oh, I want this, honey, I want this. Yeah, well, we need that. We need a washer and dryer so I'm not spending money every week going down to the washeteria and I can stay here at home and wash your dirty underwear. Well, maybe you ought to wait on buying the four-wheeler then until you get a washer and dryer. Compassion, uh, it, it, charity is love in action. I, mean, I always heard these verses. The, the, the world will use those verses talking about ch- how charity doesn't do this and charity doesn't do that. And they take these, wor- the, these verses and they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, but they take the word charity out and they stick love in there because that's what their modern versions say. Well, ch- love is great to stick in there, but charity is love in action. And, and, and like like the, our verse said, God gave. God so loved the world that he gave. He so loved us that he gave. He, his love toward us caused action. When you love somebody, it'll cause you to do things. Sweetheart love is, is not complete by itself. It takes two people. It takes two people committed to one another where to the point where they become one flesh. When, when you bring you invite somebody to church, you're telling them you love them. The way you treat people tells them whether or not you love them. 
um, when you smack somebody, they might doubt whether or not you love them. Well, it depends on how you do it. If it's your child and you say, okay, well, this is your punishment for doing that, you kind of spell things out. Well, even that can, that can show love. As the Bible tells us, uh, if he didn't love you, he wouldn't correct you. So there's some correction in love as well. Uh, you know, when, when the husband doesn't do right, the wife might tell him something to correct him. And depending on how his heart is towards her, he'll either take it or he won't. And the same goes the other way around. Wife acts up, does something they're not supposed to, spends too much money, or does something else. Son, son, son. Well, then maybe the husband needs to go out and earn some more money, amen? If she spends too much money, maybe you should be handling the money, sir. Maybe you should be, uh, and, and there's, Dan, you're not married, are you? There's not a married man in here, but if there's somebody on the internet that's married, that's who I'm preaching at. The man should, be, uh, should have the finances. One of the things that, that causes, one of the biggest reasons that causes strife in a marriage is money. Trouble over money. And one of the things that, that causes that is it tends to be the men. I know people want men and women to earn the same amount of money and everything like that. But in the real world, that doesn't happen. People pay men more because men don't ever get pregnant and leave the workplace all of a sudden. That's why men get paid more for the same position. They don't do any better, but they tend to hang around longer. It's a fact of life. You can like it or not. It doesn't mean you won't get paid more than some men for the same position if you never have a baby, but... Mm. I'm telling you, the, the man uh, should be in charge of the finances. And then... If whether the wife's working or not, he should give his wife some allowance. Allowance, amen. Uh, I, I, anyway, I, I'd give an example. Uh, I'd give Miss Tanya money. She said, "You say she was she was working and earning her own money, yeah." But you know, sometimes she gave me money too. Yeah, it does. Love doesn't put conditions on things. Love doesn't say, if you love me, you will. Girls, if a boy ever says, if you loved me, you'd do this. Or Mitch, if a girl ever says, if you love me, you'd do that. Exactly. It's conditional love. Right. It's not right. Amen. They're trying to blackmail you. They're trying to, I mean, you run for the hills at that point. You call up and say, hold on, let me see if my pastor's okay with me doing this. <laughs> Call it, Brother Lupe. I got a cell phone number if you need it. If your love needs something besides just love, I mean, if you need somebody to submit to your every uh, everything, your your every crutch, every uh, you know every desire, uh, if you want to just lay down on the couch and be fed peeled grapes, well, that's not love. That's uh, that's something else. Let me just say out there, there's, there's plenty out there right now to confuse love. Amen. If you're not paying attention, let me just draw your attention to all of everything out there that is moving everything to be focused on sex. Right. Everything on TV is either about sex right. or division. Uh, they want to make things racial. You can't do anything. Anything is not about bringing people together. It's about sex and dividing people. People don't want to talk about what everybody has in common anymore. They don't want people to love one another. You know why? Because if you loved one another, then you might start paying attention to what people who are supposed to be leaders are doing. As long as they can keep everybody divided and arguing amongst themselves... And they can keep you focused on minimum wage and, and everybody should be paid the same instead of paying attention to... Um, right. There's 
just not enough love. Love con concedes to a higher power. Love acknowledges that uh, there is a God. Lo love accepts that. Love doesn't think of self. There's no such thing as a selfish love. Uh, they had that song a couple of years ago, uh, Greatest Love of All, was all about loving yourself. No, it's not. That's not the greatest love of all. That's being selfish. There's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. The Bible says if you don't take care of your own, you're worse than a heathen. So you should take care of your, your, uh, your husband, your wife, your children. You should take care of your own. Love is also patient. Because love can wait. I know it seems like you should really get with somebody right now. Every now and then, uh, Mitch and I, we'd be watching TV and I'd, I'd turn to him and go, Mitch, I need to find a girlfriend. Mitch goes, no, you don't, Dad. Or he'd go, Dad. <laughs> now, right now he's nodding. But I can wait. Love can wait. I don't need to find Miss right now. Uh, you don't need to find Mr. right now. You find the person who loves you, loves you in the right way, is patient, Amen. doesn't man demand that you prove your love, but is anxious to prove their love. Now, I don't mean just, just hey, next time somebody's stalking you, give them a chance. That's not what I'm saying either. <laughs> Somebody starts stalking Ashley, she tends to sick me on them. Dad, this guy keeps calling me. Well, why, why does he keep calling you? Well, I called him once, and, and that was a few years ago. Anyway. You don't remember the stalker? No, okay. I might have his email somewhere. Anyway. <clears throat> Patient love says, I'll die to myself and yield to your will. That's the kind of the kind of love you should have for God. Amen. If your wife isn't convinced, sir, that you'll die for him if you have to, well, then maybe she's not convinced you love him. Ma'am, if, if your husband uh, isn't convinced that you'd die for him, I mean, love is committed that way. Till death do you part. Amen. Amen. Your partner has to know that you go to battle for them. Uh, your, your, your children should know that you will battle for them. Not to the point where you go down and get arrested because you're yelling at a teacher maybe. But, you know. <laughs> Jada, were you yelling at a teacher? Okay, well then don't pick on my Jada. But ask yourself what kind of love. Next time you tell somebody you love them. Ask yourself, uh, have you proven your love for them? How do you show the love? Is, is the love just with your lips? Or is there a commitment there? Is there a commitment to service there? Are you willing to serve? Are you willing to do uh, what it takes for them to know you love them without saying it? Do they know you love them without saying it? And by the way, if you love somebody, you should say it. Amen. Uh, one of these children's, I think it was the last quote in there that they had for that. It said, uh, uh, the, the, little, uh, the little girl said, uh, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't say I love you unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say it a lot because people tend to forget. I know my older sister loves me because she gives all her old clothes and has to gives me all her old clothes and has to go out and buy new ones. I let my big sister pick on me because my mom says she only picks on me because she loves me. So I pick on my baby sister because I love her too. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, I remember in elementary school, my mom would tell me that those little girls who were and I don't mean figuratively, but literally hitting on me. They, they would hit me. She would say, oh, they only hit you because they like you. 
I wish they'd find some other way to do it. They could give me money or something. That would, that would be a whole lot better. It, it might get some more attention, you know, better attention. 